Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas and welcome to this, the 22nd in a series of video tutorials for Unity 5. Before we begin, I'd just like to give a very personal thank you to Joseph Storm, who is the latest person to very generously donate to uh, our tutorials. All these donations we receive help us make more tutorials each week and also improve our assets to give to you guys. So if you remember, we already started doing a little side quest earlier on involving um, this little village over here and this little section here by where the NPC asks you to retrieve some loot. So we'll be using a similar sort of principle to get this done, but uh, we'll be using a few different techniques. So firstly, what I want to do is you head to scripts and into quests and let's create another folder and let's call this main quest. And in that folder, let's create a script. I'm going to call it 001 um, quest begin. So the reason I've done that is because if I name it 001, all the preceding scripts will follow in order. So we know that the main quest follows in the order of what we write the scripts in. So if we go into this script and uh, opens up in good old mono develop or visual studio whichever one you're using this first script will contain um, just two variables but um, about 10 lines of code i think in total we'll be writing um, it just depends on what we want to say and what we want to um, occur so once it's loaded up uh, make sure you're in the right script delete everything it gives you now the variables that we need to set are our quest box, um, and in fact, do you know what? We'll update our actual, uh, we'll update the quest and text box as well. So there'll be quite a few variables there. So what we'll do is um, we'll do a variable for quest update, and that will be a game object. Now, although it's text in the, what we'll be updating here, we can do it via game object, which I find much easier. The whole This whole process may be a little complicated at this point, but once you've done it one or two times, it's real, really easy. You'll be able to do it no problem. The next thing we do is um, let's do a variable for the uh, player. So we'll call it player text. So when the player uh, talks, his text will be on screen. And again, this will be game object. And remember, semicolon there. So by the, hopefully by this point, you'll be able to um, type script pretty quickly, and I won't need to explain about the capitalization, semicolons at the end, um, things like that. So we're just going to go on ahead. Next variable is going to be the um, text. I'll put text display because that will be the box which surrounds our text. That will also be game object. Now this particular script, I want to occur as soon as I start up my level, rather than something where I walk into. So the function we're gonna use is function start. As I say, I want, to, want it to occur instantly. So the first thing we're gonna put is the object that this is attached to, we want to immediately move to a, a reference point where we can uh, dispose of it later. So what we want to do is transform and then the dot position and we're going to make it equal to a vector three. And then in brackets, let's put a position on our map where um, we can put this and then dispose of it. So let's do zero minus um, 1000 and zero again. So as I say, all that's done is put the object into a position that, where it can't be used again. So what we need to do now is we need to use the get component function of our text boxes to update things. So firstly, let's do our quest update. So quest update um, dot get component and we need oops that's not what we want let's start that again get 
com component. It's auto filled again. Yeah, it may auto fill. If it does auto fill, just uh, correct it afterwards. It can get a little bit annoying with that auto fill. Um, you should probably set it off, shouldn't I? Really. Um, okay, so get component, and it will be uh, open spiky bracket text close spiky bracket open close bracket there uh, dot text, and we need to make that equal to something that our quest makes sense of. So let's just have something like exit the wood and semicolon at the end. So all that line is doing is when we start this area and it loads up, if you remember in the top right we have a little quest box so it will change that to uh, exit the wood. Now, if I remember rightly, I think we may need to put active quest, but let's quickly check. Yes, so we'll need to take where it says active quest. Oops, we don't want to cut it. So this should be active quest, exit the wood. And I'm gonna save that script just there for now. Next thing we need to do is we need to, um, let's give it a couple of seconds to load. So yield, and then wait for seconds, and in bracket let's put three. I think that's a reasonable amount of time to wait. And then after that we can start our um, discussion with our player. He'll be talking to himself at this point. So it will be player text dot get component. Um, dot spiky bracket and then text, uh, close spiky bracket and open close bracket dot text is equal to, let's see, what, what can we have him say? Let's just something simple like where am I? And then let's have that display for a, a reasonable amount of time by where he can actually speak as we may put voicing over in this at some point. So yield, wait for seconds, and how long do you think it will take to say the words, where am I? Half a second, so let's put a second just to be safe. And semicolon, and then let's alter the player text again. So player text dot get component, and then spiky bracket, text close spiky bracket open close bracket dot text is equal to uh, let's have him say I need to find a way out of this wood so I need to find a way out of this wood okay that'll do so let's have him wait again wait for seconds and let's have him wait for two seconds on that one so close um open close bracket there semicolon uh next thing we'll need to do or rather the last thing but we'll go back and alter something in just a second as well um we need to disable this game object so this dot game object uh, dot set active is going to be false and then let's close that with a, sem uh, a, cur a close curly bracket sorry so I'm going to save that script now at this point uh, you'll notice that we haven't used the text display so it's up to you whether you want your um, text box to appear on screen or not so I'll go through both possible options okay so we've got an error insert semicolon we've missed a semicolon somewhere there we've missed one there and there so let's resave that script again and uh, let's game object and let's create empty um, let's call this 001 quest start and let's drag and drop our quest onto there now we just need to drag and drop items from our canvas just here. 
for quest update, we need our quest box text to go there. Uh, message box, we need the text to, um, oops, I've done something a bit silly there. Um, let's see, where was it? There it is. So we need the text there to go on to play a text. And what we'll need to do as well is we need to slightly modify our script. If you remember, we have that off there. So we need to set it active at this point. So on there, actually, do you know what? We'll do this slightly differently. Um, the reason I, I say we'll do this slightly differently is because if you want your quest to start, with every item that's said, you want your quest box to appear, it may be different than when you just want text to appear. So I'm going to make a copy of this message box, Control D to duplicate, and I'm going to take this text out. I'm going to keep message box one as inactive, and text I'll keep as active, but I will get rid of that text just there. Quest start. In fact, let's rename this text. Let's have text player. And let's drag and drop this onto player text just there. Now, text display, uh, let's have message box one onto there. So I'm not going to worry too much about that at the moment, but I'm just going to save it. And then hopefully, when we press play, we should have um, this conversation at least begin. So where am I? I need to find a way out of this wood. So at the end of that script, we also need to put, I'm going to copy this just here. We need to put this line here, as that then clears the text of our player. So let's save that. Now, what we displayed there was just the text appearing. So let's have it with our text display or the text box. So text display dot set active true. And right at the end, just before we set the game at the uh, game object as inactive, we need text display dot set active false. And let's save that script. So adding them two lines will now bring up our text box as well as our text. So let's press play and hopefully we should see. That's already turned itself active there. Why is that turned? Ah, I know why. Sorry, we've put that in the wrong place. So if we cut that out of there and the text box should appear after that three second wait. OK, so one more time, let's press play and let's check this out. So our quest is already exit the wood, but now our text box has come up and it's now disappeared. So that is how you start up your um, initial quest. You'll notice that it has been different than how we did our um, first quest. Reason being is I just want to show you a few different options of how you can build up your own quest. Personally, I prefer this way that we've just done a little more than um, the previous way, but it's up to you whichever one you feel comfortable with. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag our player way into the forest, or the wood as we've called it, all the way over here. All the way. Because then it makes a bit more sense with our quest or story because he's in the wood so what i want to do next episode is i want to work some more with this so we started our quest and i want to walk all the way over here and then build um an addition to this main quest where when we pass a certain point another text box will appear saying oh there's a village what's over there so then we make our way over there so we'll be building on more on that so coming up in the future tutorials as well, we'll have the ability to save. Um, so we'll be creating a little file where we can save, for example, the amount of coins we've picked up. 
inventory, uh, bigger quests, there's a lot more to come. So let's save our project now and let's try this out. So let's head to our title screen. I'm just going to press play and then see how this goes. Okay, play game. So we've started and there we go. Okay, so a few other things that we probably should do quite soon, if you've noticed there. Um, we need to kind of bob our axe up and down a little bit so as it looks like there is movement there. So we'll be writing a script for that. We'll be doing a bit more with our GUI rather than just have the dot in the middle. And um, if you're using an older version of Unity 5, um, I think before 5.2, you'll probably still have the mouse visible on the screen. So we'll be writing a script to get rid of that. Um, so we just have our center cursor from GUI. But that's all to come in the upcoming tutorials. Um, there's a, Like I say, there's a lot to do, there's still a lot more to learn. But we're getting there. We're getting there. So um, until next episode, you build yourself a script here. You put what you want to appear in this text. You can put more lines or anything. If you're having problems with the script, head over to our website. You can download this exact script right there, right now. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. And I will see you in the next episode.